Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to call our meeting to order, planning and zoning meeting, November 18th, uh, 2013. Uh, Madam Secretary, let's have roll call. Mrs. Protos? Here. Mr. Parker? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Stavropoulos? Here. Mr. Giolusis? Here. Ms. St. Arnold? Here. Mr. Vinson? Here. Here. And Chairman Francis. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jumped again. Okay, uh, the next thing is the uh, quasi-judicial announcement by our attorney and uh, swearing in of any speakers who will be addressing us this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the board acts in a quasi-judicial capacity. By law, it is the board's function at this hearing to make findings of fact based on the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a recommendation on a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider that evidence which law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues arising from the application and the applicable code sections. If that evidence demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, the board is required by law to recommend in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the evidence demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the code of ordinances, the board is required by law to recommend against the applicant. The parties to the hearing are the applicant and the city. The city is represented by city staff. <clears throat> there may be persons, organizations, or groups that qualify as interveners. Persons or groups that qualify for intervener status can participate in the hearing as a party. A recognized intervener may examine witnesses, present evidence, and make arguments to the board. For a person to be granted intervener status, the person must demonstrate to the board that he or she will suffer an adverse effect as a result of the quasi-judicial decision which exceeds in degree that which may be suffered by the general community. Intervener status may be granted to the representative of, the, of an organization or group of persons who have a substantial interest in the matter under consideration if the organization or group of persons can demonstrate that it is prepared to present competent and relevant evidence which would be of significant assistance to the board in making its decision. In a few minutes, the chairman will give persons, organizations, or groups desiring intervener status the opportunity to make that request. There is an established procedure which will be followed at this quasi-judicial hearing. All witnesses must give their testimony under oath. All persons testifying at this hearing must give their name and address for the record, and all testimony and questioning must address matters that are relevant and material to the issues under consideration. The city staff will present its testimony and evidence first. The applicant and recognized interveners will have an opportunity to cross-examine the city staff and any city witnesses. The applicant will then present its witnesses and evidence. The city staff and recognized interveners will have an opportunity to cross-examine the applicant's witnesses. Recognized interveners will then present their evidence and witnesses. City staff and the applicant will then have the opportunity to cross-examine the intervener's witnesses. Absent unusual circumstances to be determined by the board, a party's opening statement and presentation is limited to 10 minutes. At that point, we will proceed to the public comment portion of the meeting. Members of the public opposing the application will be given an opportunity to present testimony. After all members of the public opposing the application have concluded, members of the public in support of the application will have an opportunity to present testimony. Each member of the public is limited to four minutes of testimony. A member of an organization or group granted intervener status who testifies as part of the organization or group's presentation forfeits the right to speak during the public comment of the meeting. During the public comment portion of the meeting, members of the public present at the hearing may donate their time to a speaker or extend the speaker's time, but in doing so, the person donating the time forfeits his or her right to speak. Each donation shall extend the speaker's time an additional two minutes. In no event shall the speaker's time be extended beyond 10 minutes of total speaking time. <clears throat> <clears throat> Following public comment, the applicant, city staff, and recognized interveners will have an opportunity to present rebuttal evidence and make a closing argument or summary. The applicant will go first, followed by city staff and any interveners. Absent unusual circumstances to be determined by the board, a party's closing summary and rebuttal evidence will be limited to 10 minutes each. Following this, the board will consider the matter. Uh, I'm going to ask at this time for any person who is going to give testimony tonight to please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn on any of the applications on the agenda tonight. Let me ask you to raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the truth you'll give before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. 
At this time, we will call up our first application. This is application 13-65, Tavares, and we will have a staff report by Mr. Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is application 13-65. It's site plan uh, review for a 2,855 square foot building addition for an existing restaurant. The property is located at 210 Dodekinese Boulevard, and it is located in the uh, special area plan uh, district. You'll see on page two of the TRC uh, review comments on this item. Uh, primarily, the comments that were most critical to the project had to do with the design flood elevation requirements in its relation to the proposed uh, addition. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the review comments, you have those there in your backup. And I will point out that all TRC comments were addressed on the October 28th, 2013 resubmittal. Uh, the criteria for the site plan review you have on page four. I will just highlight a few points. Uh, it will be a single phase development. Uh, you'll see that the uh, code requires 14 off street parking spaces, and this will be satisfied through a combination of uh, on site and off site spaces. The owner actually owns uh, several, uh, three in particular, uh, parking lots in the area and uh, there is ample uh, parking to accommodate uh, this uh, added uh, number of seats to the restaurant. Uh, we have also determined that the application is consistent with the city's conference of plan. We did not identify any conflicts with the adopted level of service standards, and we have not received any public correspondence on this item. Uh, it's our opinion that this application meets all review criteria and the staff recommendation is to approve the site plan subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, the developer is responsible for meeting, excuse me, acquiring all other jurisdictional permits and for meeting the minimum criteria of the land development code. Construction plan signed and sealed by a registered engineer licensed to practice in the state of Florida must be submitted within one year of date of final site plan approval. Three, the site plan shall expire within one year of the effective date unless an application has been filed for a building permit. And four, the applicant's kitchen facilities must be compliant with the city's fats, oils, and grease program requirements. I have provided a copy of an area map, an aerial uh, map as well, a copy of the zoning map and character district map for the area, as well as a set of site plans uh, for the addition. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, uh, we will start with... Uh Mrs. Curtis, do you have any questions for staff? Yes. Um, that building floods. Speaking, when the tide the, is speak, in. speaking to the mic, yes. uh, please. That building floods when there's a high tide and a lot of rain and it can't go out. Can you tell me, because I couldn't tell from the plans, what they're doing to correct that? Uh, per uh, the city's. The end does, where the kitchen is. Per the city's uh, floodplain management ordinance, uh, the applicant had a couple different options. They had an option to either elevate the structure or dry flood proof so the design flood elevation uh, and also include flood openings. And they chose to dry flood proof and put flood openings in uh, the addition. And that's consistent with uh, the city's uh, FEMA regulations. Okay. And what are they going to do about their... Uh their traps, can you talk a, bit, a little bit about that from the uh, cooking, the oils, and the lard and stuff that clogs up the lines down at the docks all the time? Uh, that was a point of discussion during the city's technical review committee meeting. Uh, the city has a fats, oils, and grease uh, program ordinance that has several requirements as far as the types of uh, devices that are required to be installed in the kitchen facilities and uh, the city's uh, superintendent of engineering, or excuse me, super, excuse me, the uh, city's utility superintendent uh, will ensure that uh, the restaurant does have the proper uh, separator as part of the uh, addition. Okay, with that separator, and I'm not the engineer, but with that separator, and the lines further down the the Canis where it all travels to get to one place. What's going to happen when the other restaurants clog it up and it doesn't go? Are there any uh, provisions where they're going to make improvements on that 
for the city where we don't have to uh, bear the brunt of that happening because it will happen. Uh I know this is kind of uh, unexpected, but I do have the utility superintendent here, and I, I uh, would like if Mr. Page would want to come up and. The reason he's, I'm asking. Hey, well, he's much more knowledgeable wanted, about this. I want it. I want it on record in the minutes, because it does happen, and they have to go down all the time. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm, my name is Raymond Page. I'm the utility superintendent you, for the city. Could you pick up the and mic actually, and uh, I, speak into it? You, you can take it off off that stand it, it comes off it should be all right um, I actually manage the city's fats oil and grease management program along with some environmental staff that the city has that are specifically uh, hired to handle these types of situations um, about 2006 the city brought this ordinance into effect and the issues with the sewer system down at the docks has improved tremendously it really has um, the overflow issue that was there previously has been reduced significantly um, each and every restaurant on the docks is required to follow the same ordinance so they all have grease removal requirements that that they're attached to with a permit that's been issued to each specific restaurant so they look at how much water each restaurant uses and they determine what type of device is required to appropriately move the fats oil and grease prior to being discharged from that restaurant um, so there will be no requirement for this restaurant to do downstream improvements to the sewer system. Um, in this case, they're going to meet our requirements, and that really should have no impact downstream on the sewer system. Even at high tide and flooding? Correct, ma'am. Okay, one more question I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Environmentally, with them building back out towards the water, even though we do have restaurants there on the water, do you see any problems with environmental issues because <clears throat> building back out towards the river there? No, I don't because, you know, if they follow the process that has all the DEP requirements, the swift mud requirements and the city's requirements, those are all designed to prevent a negative environmental impact. Now, that's not to say that in real life that that couldn't actually happen, and that's why the city has code enforcement. They have these management programs uh, for environmental issues, and it would be addressed at that time. But by law, they, they absolutely have to follow what's written already by the state and local government to prevent that. Did they have to go into any extra environmental issues prior to these plans being presented to the city? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, I just want that on the record, Mr. Chairman, for the future. Thank you. Okay, uh, I want to welcome our new member, any Mr. Other Parker. Questions? Mr. Parker, do you have any questions for staff at this time? I don't have anything that would uh, come close to what she just asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Carr. I'll be right now. Mr. Steropoulos, do you have any questions uh, for staff? Uh, no, not at this moment. Not at, okay, Mr. Vincent. Uh, no questions for staff. I'll wait until after the applicant uh, gives his presentation. Okay, Mrs. St. John. St. Arnold. Sorry. No questions. I, Thank I, you. I'll, I'll get your name right after about <laughs> 10 years. Good. It's good. St. John. Thank you. No, thank you. No questions. Nothing, uh, John? Yeah. Okay. I don't Mr. have Chairman, any. Chairman, before you get to the, to the uh, yes. applicant, excuse me, you may want to ask for intervener status because interveners will have an opportunity to question. Okay, do we have any, uh, any person who is uh, representing a group of people who uh, is going to serve as an intervener? Any individual or person requesting intervener status in this application, not any other application but this one before the board. <laughs> I see you over there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so seeing none, we're going to go ahead and proceed, and we will have the applicant uh, come forward. This time, uh, please give us your name and address. Robert Knox, 1583, Cottonwood Terrace, Dunedin, Florida. Bill Donovan, 1650, Brady Drive, Dunedin, Florida. Okay. Uh, speak. You can take the mic off, and uh, I think it'd be a lot easier for you if you just take it off the stand and speak uh, directly into it. There you go. You have 10 minutes to give us a presentation. Okay, we're applying for this restaurant. Um, the tenants of the restaurant are very, very experienced tenants. They're 
Um, they run a lot of other restaurants on the water. They specialize in this. Um, they're coming down, um, going to build this uh, restaurant. They, they have a big lease with us. They came, they're well endowed to handle this, to handle the issues that come along with this, you know, with water, sewer, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Severus, the uh, owner of the property, is all for him being there. He's redoing several places, uh, starting to redo some of the properties. This property is more than well due um, for an overmake. It's The building's very old. Um, and it and it needs to be redone. There's been many tenants in there that have come in and it's the too small of a restaurant to actually make it. And by putting the restaurants down along the water would not increase any kind of pollution. We had cars parking there that leaked oil, et cetera, et cetera, into the sewers and into the water. All the cars would be basically almost out of that parking area. It would be a much cleaner environment uh, to go. Would the other gentleman have any comments to make yeah. um, relative else. to the application? Nothing else to add. Okay. Uh, stay there, and we'll uh, ask the board members uh, okay. if, any, if you have any questions. Uh, Mrs. Proto, do you have any questions yes. for the applicants? Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit on the parking situation there? Because you are taking some of the parking with the facility there. So we need to know about the parking because parking is really very dear down in the a absolutely area. there's parking on uh, the next across the road that mr. Severus owns that's part of his lease it parks approximately 60 to 80 cars in that area he has a there's a dumpster being put back there uh, for the garbage be a poured pad yes. with a dumpster and a f approved fence dumpster. along there he has a more than ample parking across there okay I just hope you're not going to have purple flags out there in the road like the orange ones and handing out flyers. A absolutely not. Um, there's an ordinance that was against that. Is it still in effect, I, Mr. I don't, Chairman? I don't know. If Rodney, is it yes. still in effect? Yes. It's not being regulated. Okay. Right. I'm going to watch for it. Um, these these uh, tenants have several in Pinellas County restaurants. Um, very well, nice well, restaurants. And would you like to let us know the name of the restaurant? I, absolutely. Um, they have Thirsty Marlin in um, Palm Harbor. Yes. They have uh, Marker 8 on the water. They have Nantucket Bucket over on the water. They have uh, another Thirsty Marlin in Largo. Um, not, but they are not franchising in any way. Okay. And you're going to have your own dumpster for your own restaurant because that's Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. What about firewalls? Looking in here in the plans, I was trying to see where your firewalls are. Pertaining to the seating areas? Seating areas in the, in the building for protection. There, that is an open seating area, but it is sprinklered. The fire marshal has asked us to sprinkler the buildings. Okay, but there's not any firewalls within the walls. There's no partitions where the no. people are setting yeah. their block okay. walls. It's not necessary. I would think it would be down there. Yeah, it's so close. Space. I know, but it's so close you'd think that, that they would have them do that for protection. Yeah, please speak into the mic. Yes. Yes, I'm we, sorry. We, wanna, we have to record all of this. Yes. Well, I've got two of them here. They're getting it. Okay. I'm finished. Mr. Parker. Well, the only concern I had was the parking, and you just addressed that. So I don't have any other questions. More, more than ample. Okay. Mr. Clark. My question's been addressed already. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Stavropoulos. Okay, I just have one question. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the name of the existing restaurant is right now. Bill Pappas's, or Captain Pappas's. Excuse me, Captain Pappas's. It's the, yeah, the old Mr. Slovakis. Okay. It's the one adjacent to the parking lot that the city has. Where the Harbor Master is. Right. right down the Just trying to picture it in my mind. That isn't the tenant either. Okay. 
Thank you. Are you okay? Mr. Vincent? Just a couple questions. Uh, I was concerned about the parking, but uh, from what staff commented, I think that's okay. Um, what type of a roof is going to be on the building? I couldn't tell from the uh, plans here. It will be a uh, three-quarter, the uh, roof will be a three-quarter wood tongue and groove stained on one, on the bottom side of it. It'll be the, uh, and then it'll be a tin roof on the top to meet all of wind codes, the 140 mile an hour codes. And I didn't see an, uh, uh, an elevation of, of the uh, building. Is that in it, the, it was so, there. Uh, it's in, it's in. Well, I saw what was it's labeled as elevation, but it didn't look like, it was hard to tell really what the building was going to look like. It, it so, showed the outline of the roof and the walls, and, but it, it, didn't, it didn't describe really what the siding materials were going to be, that sort of thing. Seat four has those details. Well, that's what I saw. It looks like just a, it's a line drawing of a roof. And Your walls are basically open on that. Okay. Open meaning where you can walk right through it or there's glass? Walk right through. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Mr. St. Arnold? No questions. Mr. Jalousis? No questions. How do you, um, so this is, it, it's actually, I saw open on the plans and everything, I mean, and uh, how do you secure it in the evening, I mean, just. They, um, what I've seen of their operation is the, the uh, bar sitting areas they have, everything is mobile with them and they put them away, just like they do at Marker 8 in Dunedin uh, in Nantucket Bucket in Safety Harbor. Uh, everything is put away. So, so in the evening? They shut down and clean up and put everything lock up and then lock up. They have a, a shed and stuff that's in the prints. But the space is open. Space is open. I think what I think what he's saying, Mr. Franzis, is that the tables and chairs, there's a storage area adjacent to the bathrooms and all the tables and chairs would be stored inside that storage area. Yeah, I was, I was just concerned with vandalism and, you know, Things of that nature. If the space Abs is open. Absolutely, because they um, there is no fence between the uh, city area and that parking lot, so it's 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 open. They have a security system at marker eight, and I think they're putting one here. Also, these guys are very high tech guys. They know um, what they're doing with this stuff. I was shocked because I didn't believe you could break down every day and put back. Right, and, it's all work. They have it to an art. They had, uh, when I was at Marker 8, they had 850 people there uh, on a Sunday afternoon. They're a, they uh, deal with the water trade very big. What, what are their night hours going to be? Their night hours are going to be till um, 12 o'clock during the week and on Friday and Saturday, two o'clock. Are they going to have live entertainment there? I think so. I, I can't really tell you. I don't know if they are. We uh, put it in their lease that, you know, they're to abide by all the city and county rules, noise ordinance and everything else. Okay, Mr. Vincent. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what about deliveries to the restaurant? It's a, a fairly sizable restaurant and that's a very narrow road there on Dodecanese. Uh, do you know if there's any plans to limit uh, the timing of deliveries and that sort of things? Uh, yeah, absolutely. To they, minimize uh, the impact on traffic. They're they're going to get all morning deliveries. They'll have to pull into the lot like they do now because it's an issue on Deccanies. Um They'll pull in and and back out. Okay. Thank but you. there is room for them. We've made room for deliveries in there. That's what that open area is about. And landscape, we'll go along there. Okay, any other questions? Ms. Protus? I just want to say welcome to the community. Uh, this will be an asset. One thing about tarpon, you don't lose weight and you don't go hungry. You stay very rotund and healthy looking. Yeah. All the eating establishments. Thank you. We, we, we have all good food here. So we, we have asked the tenant. There is a, uh, a big pole structure out there. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> we have asked, asked him to put welcome to the sponge docks yes, uh, down there because it's the main mass that you see coming down that road. It's the first thing. There used to be a shark there, obviously. Well, you guys have seen that site. Good. But we, want, we asked him to put that sign up. Thank you. Florida crackers like to eat too. <laughs> Thanks. Have, Thank have a seat. Um, I'm going to ask uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak against this application at this time? Is there anyone who wishes to speak for it? Seeing none, I will close the public portion of the meeting and entertain a motion for this application. We have the motion to approve the application with uh, staff recommendations. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Anybody? I'll Any second. comments? Yes. Oh, sorry, second. Recommendations. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Speak into the mic. I'll, I'll second the motion. If but it's already been second. Oh, it has been already. Yes. Okay. Do you have any, Do you have anything no, you want no to add at this no point? No recommendations. Roll call, Catherine. Mr. Parker. Um, yes. Mr. Carr. Yes. Mr. Stavropoulos. Yes. Mr. Gialusis. Yes. Miss St. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Vinson. Yes. Chairman Francis. Yes. Good luck, guys. <coughs> Welcome. The next application is 13-76 uh, Tarpon Springs Reverse Osmosis Water Plant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is application 13-76. It is a site plan review application for the Tarpon Springs Reverse Osmosis Water Plant. Property is located at 1624 LNR Industrial Boulevard, and it's a little over 10 acres. Um, you see there at the end of page one, the beginning of page two, the TRC review comments uh, on this item. Uh, and you'll see that all the TRC comments were addressed on the November 12th. Uh, 2013 resubmittal. Uh, as far as site plan review <coughs> contents, uh, I'll just highlight uh, a couple items. As far as access, the city is uh, in the process of designing the extension of LNR Industrial Boulevard from its current terminus to the west, uh, to Wesley Avenue uh, to the north. This, this uh, roadway segment is, segment is required by code and will provide north-south access uh, to the plant. Uh, you also note that the applicant was required to do an ecological assessment report and you have that included in your backup and uh, it appears that there is suitable habitat on the site for uh, gopher tortoises and um, <clears throat> those will be, uh, if found, those will be relocated consistent with the FFWCC regulations. Uh, as far as level of service analysis, we did not identify any conflicts with the city's adoptive level of service and this proposed development. Uh, we have not received any public correspondence on this item. Uh, therefore, it's uh, staff's professional opinion that this application meets all review criteria and our recommendation is to approve the site plan subject to our usual uh, three uh, conditions of approval. Uh, you have a location map, aerial photo, a zoning map, a future land use plan map of the area. You also have a set of site plans, the ecological assessment report, a few uh, building renderings and elevations of the structure itself, as well as the uh, water storage tank. And I've also provided, although they didn't come out very uh, clearly, uh, a few plan sheets showing the planner profile for the extension of LNR Industrial Boulevard. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but before we get to that point, I think I'd like uh, Mr. Page to kind of just give you guys a brief synopsis of the steps the city has achieved to date because this project has been 
in the works since about 2006. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, with a lot of interruptions. Uh, just give us your name again so we document. Yes, my name again is uh, Raymond Page. I'm the utility superintendent for the city of Tarpon Springs. Um, I've been working on this project since inception. Um, this is a cooperatively funded project, which is a very important element. That means that the Southwest Florida Water Management District has partnered with the city and has basically uh, has a $20 million grant at stake with this project. Excuse me, could you tilt that microphone up a little bit? Sure. Thank you. Um, so far, the city has purchased all the required land that's needed. It's received the three permits that are required uh, from the regulatory agencies that govern this. Um, the preliminary engineering work has been completed for the RO plant. Um, the permitting, including the testing of the wells and the pilot testing for the facility itself, which actually measures the water quality. Um, well drilling has been completed for the production wells uh, throughout the city on the north half of the city on the uh, northern side of the Enclote River. Um, final design work for the engineering side of it is that the 50% has been completed and the city is now awaiting the 90% submittal. Um, the work on the LNR industrial portion, that design work has been completed and that will be going to contract soon uh, to get a contractor in there to actually finish the construction. And uh, the city's injection well feasibility study has been completed and that project has been awarded to Montgomery Watson. Um, the value of the construction of this project uh, to Wharton Smith was the contractor that was hired and that was a contract for $35.9 million. Um, so far the city has received $3.7 million in reimbursement from the Southwest Florida Water Management District, which leaves $16.3 million available to the city for that. Um, the total project value, including the injection well and the roadway extension, is approximately $51 million. And uh, I'll take any additional questions that anybody would have. Okay. We'll start with uh, Mrs. Perot. Do you have any questions? No, I'm just concerned. Uh, probably we can't right hear you. Can you. I'm just concerned uh, after what's happened in Dunedin and they have their water plant, even though it's across the river, that we have no repercussions with sinkholes. Mr. Parker. I don't have any questions at this time. No. Okay. Mr. Carr. That was a question of mine concerned with, since the project started, is the amount of water that's being pulled out of the groundwater uh, system in the aquifer. So um, I know that's not really something we're addressing tonight. Like, what's, what's the kind of uh, timetable for this project that we're the building and the project the facility should actually come online in April of 2015 what mr. Chapman what's the um, usually isn't it a year that we to apply for a building permit okay so once they apply for the construction permit then that activates the site plan and uh, they're good to go more details are firing out then okay yes there's really been a lot of legwork to this point, and then once this process gets completed and we get issued a building permit that allows the company to go out there and start constructing things, that's really going to move quickly. It really is. What type of headache is the pipeline going to kind of create with the local um, roads well, and everything? It, there's, uh, in the plan right now, it's, it's intended to do a lot of directional drilling, which means that they'll actually send the piping under the roadways so that they don't have to disturb like major intersections along all 19 and things. Um, and then once we get past the roadway sections, a lot of the, the construction is going to be in corridors that are right now Progress Energy Power Line corridors. So that will kind of smooth that process because you'll be off the roadways and you'll be able to dig those without affecting traffic or anything like that. Okay. So all that has been considered in the design. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Stavropoulos. Yes, my question is um, how far reaching are these pipelines going to extend to? Reaching in depth or in, reaching in distance? In distance. Um, well, the the majority of this, the, the entire well field is within the city's limits, with the exception of a couple little places right along Anclote Boulevard, which are on the north side of the boulevard, which is technically Pasco's side of it, you know what I mean? But other than that, it, it's all going to be within the city's service area, if you uh, follow Will these pipelines access the uh, Anclote River for no. a water source? No, these are going to be coming from deep 
brackish water that would otherwise be unusable. You could not drink it. And that's why this R reverse osmosis, which is what RO stands for, process has been selected to be able to remove the salt from water that you would not typically be able to use. So the wells themselves are going to be pulling up brackish water from deep under the freshwater aquifer so that that won't be affected. So there's all kinds of monitoring and checks and balances that go along with that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes. Mr. Vincent. Uh, the brine discharge water, is that regulated by any agency as far as the effect of uh, uh, how yes, that's handled? Yes, it is. It's, it's uh, regulated by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. That's who we had to get a permit through. And um, we had to do a lot of toxicity analysis to ensure that it wouldn't have a negative impact to the receiving waters. Um, but yeah, that, that shouldn't be an issue for us. Do they periodically review that after the construction is completed and the, and the they, operation begins? Regularly, we have to sample that water body and ensure that there is no negative impact to it. Um, realizing that this is going to be discharged right at the power plant's uh, industrial canal, where they have an ex extremely high dilution factor that they use for their cooling towers. So our water is going to mix in with their water, and it's really it's going to be a non-issue. It's just salt water. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Arnold? No questions. Thank you. Mr. Jodosis? No questions. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Can I ask one more question? Is, I don't I don't hope I'm not too far off topic. Um, with the super chemical site, the, the cleanup, I know that was labeled the clean area now or whatever the label is. Um, do we know how far the reaches that made into the aquifer, if it did, and then if having an uh, amount of impact of the water that you pull out of the aquifer, if that would potentially create an issue of something seeping into the city's water source? Well, there's a couple things that go on with that, and that's a very good question, actually. You know, EPA's done an extensive study of that location, and they've deemed that there really is no environmental impact there. Now, aside from that, whether they found it or not, let's just take the supposition that there may be. Um, the RO process itself is literally, it's a, an extremely tight filter that no particle can make it through. So even if the, a small amount of that were to get into the raw water source, and that's what that's called, you know, the process itself has numerous checks and balances that are going to ensure that anything that were ever to be in there would be filtered out. It's just, that's the reality of it. That's why they use this process in all different parts of the world, because at the end, the, the end product is pure water. Thanks. Sure. Anything else? OK, have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this application? Mr. Chairman, don't forget to ask for intervener, intervener status, please. If you would make the record clear. Do we have a, a representative re regarding a group of people serving as an intervener? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak for it? Okay, we'll close the public portion and entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept application 13-76, row water plant with um, staff recommendations. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Stavropoulos? Yes. Mr. Giolusis? Yes. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Vinson? Yes. And Chairman Francis? Yes. Thank you. This time we have a um, an ordinance uh, number 2013-24, and I will have Mr. Chapman give us a staff report. Mr. Chairman, before we do a staff report, I'm going to ask for you because I know that there are intervener status persons uh, in the audience. I'm going to go ahead and do that first, if it's uh, so we can get that out of the way. If there are any persons or organizations in the audience wishing to 
request to intervene or status, please stand and do that now. Mary, you want to come up here? Please give us your name and address. Attorney Mary Coburn, 15 East Orange Street, Tarpon Springs. And I'm here requesting intervener status on behalf of Nina Gray, Yaya's Shop, Naomi Kitsos, Spongerama, Deborah Parisi, My Favorite Store, Gloria and Merlu Kritzik, Gloria's Gifts, Se Se Seaside Paradise, and Rio de la Portis, Tarpon Shell Shack, and Tarpon Breeze. Uh, these are all gift shops on the sponge docks, and they would be adversely impacted if uh, this wasn't reviewed on their behalf because of the financial uh, involvement of, of the, specifically the private property issue and the, and the uh, racks, and the, which you'll learn about, but the, the point being that they will be adversely impacted more than the average citizen because of their commercial enterprise on the sponge docks. Okay. I she does not speak at this time, right? No, she doesn't speak now. She, if the board decides to grant intervener status, and you'll need to have a motion to that effect okay. and a vote on it, then okay. she'll be permitted to, on behalf of the folks identified, to go ahead now and to give question her witnesses, present evidence, and make argument. Okay. And so you can ask now for a motion from your board okay. to accept uh, or, or reject uh, Ms. Coburn as intervener status. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I move that uh, Ms. Coburn, uh, on behalf of her uh, clients that she mentioned be granted uh, intervener status for this hearing. Can I, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Just to clarify, I haven't seen this yet. So, um, so we're just granting the ability for her to represent the residents that are here already. Right. So she represents the 12 residents that she routed off or whatever it was. Um, right. Okay. Correct. And just just as a point of general clarification, you, you have in your rules intervener status, which which means that. Uh, a person who is going, who may suffer uh, an effect greater than the general public as a result of a particular application, they can become a party to the application, meaning that they can question witnesses, uh, which again, if you're taking public comment, that, those are public comments. Those are not questioning witnesses, so that's the distinction. They can present evidence and they can make argument, as would the applicant or the city. So they fundamentally become a party to the application. Does that make, hope that's helpful. Okay. All right. Does she have like 40 minutes then since she's representing like 10 people? No, God each? no, she doesn't have 40 minutes. I think your rules suggest <laughs> that she still has a, has a max of a max of 10, 10. when she's... Yeah, we had ten. a meeting on that. Uh, yes, we yeah. had a meeting on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, now, um, so we will hear from staff first. Is that There's correct? a motion on the floor and no oh, second. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let's, uh, any discussion have, on this have, motion? Do you have a second on the motion? No, we haven't had a second yet. John second. Did. John did. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. I didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put it in the mic. Okay. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Savaropoulos? Yes. Mr. Gialousis? Yes. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Vinson? Yes. And Chairman Francis? Yes. Okay, now, uh, do we have the staff report? And let's Sorry, give us the uh, give us yeah. the give yeah. Us just the just very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Kindness, please. Yeah. First of all, uh, there is no uh, staff recommendation on uh, this item. Uh, essentially, what you have here is, as you may recall, uh, the board considered ops, uh, ordinance 2013-18 a little while ago, and that ordinance dealt with new regulations regarding outdoor display of merchandise in the sponge docks area and those uh, regulations uh, have been implemented and those regulations were based on input from uh, representatives of sponge docks merchants association after adoption of that ordinance the city received additional input from affected business owners who have proposed additional changes to those uh, new adopted regulations those changes were discussed at the board of commissioners november 5th regular meeting at the conclusion of the discussion the commission directed staff to take the proposed changes to the planning and zoning board for their review and recommendation uh, back to the board of commissioners. And uh, that's all we have. Okay, now, uh, I have questions for staff. Uh, start with Mr. Protus. Do you have questions for staff? Yes. Uh, an ordinance was passed where they couldn't hand out uh, flyers. Has that been rescinded? Our rule was passed. 
Has it been rescinded? No. Okay, it's not being enforced. That's one problem. Second problem is uh, what is else is not being enforced down there because of the way the situation has come around about the sponge docks that was passed the last time. But a few. Yes, for Mr. Chapman. I'm not. I'm not sure I understand your. your all right. Question, Ms. Pose. When, when uh, they had hearings on sponge docks about two or three years ago, I think that was the time. The commission stipulated things that needed to be enforced at the sponge docks, but it's not being enforced. And we need to look at those issues, I think, before we go forward with anything else. Well, understanding that's your position, this ordinance does not uh, does not address solicitation on the sponge docks. That, right, I be... know it doesn't, but it's going to interfere with what is decided here tonight. Well, it, that, that's for your consideration, but that's not no. evidence before the board. And I'll go into okay. that later on as we get into discussion. If, if I may ask a question, it's my understanding that the only thing that you're considering tonight is the outdoor display merchandise ordinance. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And that's, that's part that of was, it. Uh, that was my understanding. That's part of it, uh, Mrs. Coburn. Uh, what I understand. Said that could be on the sidewalks, which could be uh, shown on sidewalks. You know, the sponge docks is a historical uh, place. And it started out with sponges and shells and the curio stores years ago. I'm, I'm not, I can't vote on the alternate, but I'm going to give you some history about it. And they used to always have sponges and shells out there in their few little bins, and there weren't that many. Now what we have down there is a flea market. When you start to go down Though the Canis from 19, it's yelling the flags, handing out flyers, and I understand business, but it's not what it's supposed to be. On the end of Halas, there's a store. You can't even walk. There's racks with shoes. There's racks with clothes. You can't get by the sidewalks, on the sidewalks. That, if you're going to do something like that, you should limit it to marine uh, it, uh, facilities, marine artifacts, shells, sponges. That's what it's all about. Not selling clothes and shoes. Put them nice in your store and make it have a little dignity down there. Right now, it doesn't have it. And I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me tonight, but it's the truth. You ride down there on weekends, and you, you can see what's going on down there. They're pushing people. It looks nasty. It's a shame to what the sponge docks is all about. And growing up there and family having business there, you can smile all you want. But that's exactly what's happened down there. Everyone's trying to outdo each other as you start to go down the docks. Then when you go towards the other end, it's more subdued and it's nicer. It's embarrassing. It's not a carnival. It's not a flea market. It should have some dignity. That's what people come to see. They come to see the Greek sponge divers. They come to see what's going on in Tarpon with the heritage. What's going on down there right now is not the heritage of the sponge docks. And if you don't agree with me, you don't understand what it's all about. And that's what's happened here. We need to be very cautious of what we allow to go on with racks and hats and shoes and scarves and sweaters and bathing suits and dresses. That's, you go to Greece, you don't see all of that like that. I just came from Greece four weeks on the islands. You don't see all of that. It's in the stores, yes. Shock, it's in the stores. Klaus, Ayana, Gynos, they have set rules so it doesn't become a carnival. And good people have their businesses there. I know them all. But we've got to do something to make it a little more dignified than what it is now, because we've lost. And this is what we have to look at tonight. And I'll say more later. And racks are not going to help it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Parker? Well, I do have a question, and I don't really know who I need to address the question to. Right now, we're 
for addressing staff. This is for staff, so the, yes, Mr. Chapman. Okay, that then then I'm probably going to ask it to the right people then. Okay, that's fine. Do we not have an ordinance in place for the for the city of Tarpon Springs that racks aren't allowed in the city of Tarpon Springs, but apparently they're allowed on, on the sponge docks? Is I can that take that, Mr. Vincent. The only you're correct, Mr. Parker. The only place where the outdoor display of merchandise is allowed is on the sponge docks. It's not allowed anywhere else in the city. So we have an ordinance for the rest of the city, but the sponge docks are allowed to to circumvent the the ordinance for. I wasn't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure of the purpose. I assume, like Mrs. Protos uh, uh, discussed earlier, it was probably originally related to marine-related materials, sponges, shells, and that sort of thing. It's kind of you know, <laughs> grown over the years, but uh, it is a special. Uh, consideration that's given only to the sponge docks. You can't do it in downtown. You can't do it on 19. You can't do it in any other area of the city other than other than the sponge docks. All right. Now that's really the only question I had. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Um, just to clarify, so it's what's trying to be what's being presented tonight's 30 inches off a of building or intruding onto public space, not private property. And my second thought is, does the private property stop where the wall is on the buildings along the sponge dock? Is that something? And not, all, uh, not in all cases. Uh, the property line varies from property to property. So in some instances, you'd have sidewalk between the property line and the front of the, the face of the building. In other instances, you don't where the, the property line is at the face of the building. OK. And the city knows which ones those are, I um, suppose, uh, I would assume? Yes. OK. <laughs> So it's 30 inches out from the the private property line. Is that is that right? Yes. And then if you read a little further, uh, the amendment uh, that you're looking at tonight would increase uh, the height of these areas from 36 inches, which you see is stricken, and and move that up to 66 inches. And I believe which would accommodate. That's only on that's on private property only, or is that? Because 36 inches looks like on, am I wrong with that? Ms. Vincent's here at, uh, to shed some light on this. Okay. On the public right of way, the way this is drafted, um, or way, the way that's currently adopted, is you have 30 inches of depth and you have three feet in height, measured from the, and 30 inches measured from the face of the building. Um, and there was not a differentiation whether it was on public or private previously under the way the code's written right now. What's being proposed tonight does a, f a couple of things. And this was based on um, the city manager and myself walking around and actually taking some measurements as well as uh, discussions with, um, with various merchants who were affected by this. So what's being proposed strictly as a compromise, the city's not endorsing this, this is just trying to come to a happy conclusion to this and put it to bed, frankly. Um, so on pro on public property, you would have the allowable. You'd have 30, 30 inches of depth measured from the face of the building, um, and up to sixty six inches in height. And the rack or the whatever has to be fastened to you know, to the building. Under the for displays that are located entirely on private property, so now you're not encroaching on the public sidewalk. Essentially, everything that's on on private property. Um, if you have a situation such that we provided some pictures where it's under roof essentially and partially enclosed with a minimum 36 inch high enclosure so because there's some like porch areas down there that are all private property that people I believe actually pay additional lease to you know because it's usable space in the terms of the you know, of the lease in those instances you basically you still have to abide by the 30 the 66 inches in height as this is drafted but you're not restricted to the 30 inches and being attached to the face of the building. Basically, you have a kind of a, a display area under roof and partially enclosed. So because it's all on private property, we gave some additional leeway that that was being requested. Um, in no instance, whether it's on private property or public, um, uh, merchandise shall not be hung from or fixed to any part of the building, um, except in the instance where you can actually have a permanently installed rack that otherwise comports with the height limit and the depth limit. So if you have like 
rods or something that are attached to the face of the building. If you wanted to hang stuff on them, you could do that. Again, complying with the 66 inches in height, not no higher than that. Um, so that's the, the the compromise that we've put, what we're presenting. Um, I, we'll see where this goes tonight. The board of commissioners reviewed that, and then they wanted to send this back. To, you know, wanted to bring this to the obviously to you guys for uh, for review and recommendation before they take any any more make any more decisions about it. Um, so hopefully that didn't just confuse you. I was trying to explain where how we got here, but um, I'll be trying to happy answer any more questions as this thing goes goes along. I know uh, Mr. Chapman hasn't been intimately involved in this, so. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Appreciate did it. I just confuse you more? No, I apologize I did, if I no, did, I Mr. It. Carr. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. We're, uh, we're going to take it in order, uh, Mr. Minson. Okay. Do uh, you have any other questions at this time for no, staff? No, at this time, no. Thank you. Mr. Stavropoulos, uh, questions for staff? Yes. Who actually came up with all these figures, <laughs> these calculations? The And it, under what... I mean, what, what guidelines or how, how did you put these things together? Well, let me really step back. Under the old code, if you will, prior to us adopting the special area plan, there was a reference in the land development code that said, and this kind of gets back to why the sponge docks has an exception, reference that said the only place that you're allowed to have outdoor display of merchandise is in the sponge docks, and it actually defined the streets. And then it refers to the code of ordinances, and I believe that's in your folder there Rodney but and the, the code of ordinance set the standard for the the measurements and it was really difficult to one it was difficult to enforce I can read what it says if you like but that was the beginning point when we looked at when we were doing these updates to the to the smart code we realized that we had not addressed outdoor display in this code so we had to create something essentially so so partially it's based on the existing regulation that's in the code of ordinances um, but it also we, we we walked around again we measured we looked but there was also input that came from the sponge docks merchants association representatives that were requesting some more restrictions so that's how the first set of of codes the you know the original the 2013-18 ordinance so that was a combination of staff working with the existing the original code of ordinances and with the and representatives of the merchants association is how we came to that some those 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 numbers if you will and then when it went into a force went into effect we got a lot of feedback from actual you know business owners that were being affected who were you know not happy with what got was put in place and so they've come back to the city and there's been more input so now we're back with kind of the compromise situation so I, this is not, you know, this is never going to be perfect for everybody. So is it essentially creating a hazard, a health hazard, or some kind of a safety hazard? No, the way this is drafted, the, you know, anything that's being displayed into the public right of way, one, it has to be secured. Uh, you still have to meet accessibility requirements, ADA. And, you know, so all of that's part of this. That they, you know, that's just you can't. You know, you, that's part of this ordinance. So no, we don't deem that this is creating any hazard. Um, it's really cleaning up from the previous code that was very nebulous and hard to enforce and trying to come to a workable solution that everybody can live with. Okay, thank you. Renee, does this, um, does this eliminate, if somebody has a rack of clothes, can, it, can they bring out a rack of clothes if it con uh, conforms to the 66 inch height and the 30 inch depth if yes this does not specify the type of rack or materials or what can be displayed so I mean, if, if you meet the height and the in the requirements yes you can yeah, display i mean a if it's rack. uh if it's a rack that you have inside the store mm -hmm. and you want to bring it out right and display it within these parameters is that still allowable if this gets adopted with the height increased height limit yes but it doesn't have to be uh, screwed into the building. It's, it has to. It has to be secured to the building, in okay. some manner. So, but then you can take it in at night. Exactly. Though. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and if you want to hang, um, if you want to hang any kind of item on the front of your store, is that still allowed? It is allowed as long as it's on a fixture that is 66 inches in height or less. So you can't hang stuff up from the awnings and from okay. the doors and stuff it's got to be it's got to meet that same height limit okay just for the display 
All right, and there's one thing on this uh, page that was stricken previously, but I see it uh, made it back here, and I think it's an error. What's that? And this has to do with the open market building. That was eliminated previously. Oh, the definition is still there, but it's not actually allowed in any of the districts. When you go to the actual okay. the, the okay. matrix, it shows the permitted right. and conditional uses. So we, we left the definition in. We didn't take the definition out. Okay, okay. Mr. Vincent? One of my concerns that I don't think is addressed in this, and I haven't heard it, uh, is um, the width of the usable sidewalk along there. Um, it sounds from what I've heard that it varies with property from property to property, and I don't know how much of the sidewalk is um, in right-of-way or how much is privately owned. Can you shed some light on that, uh, Ms. Vincent? I don't know. It, it, well, you're exactly correct. It varies from, from property to property. The way this is drafted, um, if you're, the only time that you can have something encroach into the public right-of-way is if you have, if the, f if the front face of your building is set back 30 inches or less from the actual public right-of-way line, you're actually, you're, that's the only time that you're allowed to have anything that could encroach into the public sidewalk area. So let's say if your building is right against the, the back of the right-of-way line, so that it's a zero setback, then your outdoor display can encroach 30 inches into the public sidewalk. But you still have to be able to maintain the ADA accessibility and clear passage requirements. So functionally, you may not be able to have it if you just don't if you don't have the the allowable space. So you may maybe you can only have a foot of depth because there's just not enough sidewalk space to maintain the clear, the ADA accessibility under the building code. What, do you know what that ADA accessibility uh, width is for a sidewalk? It's, it's the wheelchair requirement, and I'm, I think it's 36, 36 inches. It's 36 inches. Yeah, it's 36 inches. So just one wheelchair width is all that's yes. required? Yes. What if you have two on that? Because, uh, you know, that's a big concern I have. You know, when sure. I drive down the docks and you see, sure. you know, people are having troubles navigating as a, a pedestrians or having trouble navigating sure. along the sidewalks. And uh, I think that's probably bad for business as well as, you know, a safety problem. Uh, one other question. Um, I'm not sure, and maybe I wasn't here, uh, if we discuss, did this board discuss this earlier, Rodney, a couple months ago? Yes. It, it was, it, it came through, but it was grouped with some other amendments, so it, it didn't okay. get a ton of attention when it went through. I missed that meeting, so I, I just mm -hmm. don't have the background, I guess, from that. Uh, I was just wondering, the genesis of this issue um, is, is there a particular group or, or that's wanting this change, or is it, is it Ms. Coburn's clients primarily that have asked for the change? There's, <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two groups, and then there's the city, and from the city's perspective, we're trying to get a workable ordinance, and we needed to address this in this particular smart code because it was, it was an omission, so we had, we had a gap, and so we wanted to at least address it so that, one, it was still legal to do outdoor display of merchandise, and we wanted to get the parameters in place so that it was easily enforceable because what was under the code of ordinances was pretty nebulous and, and badly written, frankly. So we were trying to improve on what we had and make it clear. Um, at that point in time, we received some input from representatives of the Merchants Association who requested that there be an established height limit, and that's where the 36 inches came from. And when that so that went through uh, as part of the ordinance, and then in reality, when it was when that was uh, adopted, then we started receiving input from affected business owners who were you know, really wanted that raised and had some other issues that Ms. Coburn will address. So when we met with them, uh, the city manager and myself um, walked the docks. You know, Mark was out actually measuring things and, and looking at the heights of the you know, of the clothes racks and things like that. So what would be the minimum necessary for the for the clothes racks and things to be able to be displayed. So that's where the 66 inches came from. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Aaron Arnold? No questions right now. Mr. Jalousis? So just so I'm clear, there's always a 36 inch minimum requirement no matter what because of ADA? Uh, for the, yes. <laughs> Yes, for, okay. the, for the clear passage, yeah. yes. No more questions. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing uh, with the attorney. Uh, tonight, we're just, uh, do we vote on this or do we just uh, make, rec uh, we just discuss it? 
No, you vote on it. You vote on it whether you'd uh, recommend its uh, adoption as it's amended or you would recommend against that adoption. Okay. I think well, the only difference here tonight is that the city is not making a recommendation one way or the other. That's, but, but you're still required to make a decision. Okay. Uh, now, at this point, we, uh, uh, I just want to find out, so uh, we, do, we follow the proper protocol, who goes first at this point? I think we've asked all the questions of staff. Now we hear, who do we hear from first, the intervener? That would be appropriate. Okay. Uh, Ms. Coburn? Can I be allowed to question Ms. Vincent after a Yes, uh, you can, you can please go up to the uh, okay. mic. You can take it off to make it easier for yourself if you want. Well, I'll, I'll just make a short uh, sort of opening statement so that you understand what I'm talking you, about. You can, Mary. That'd be fine. But then I'd like you to get into questioning city. If yeah, I'd like, I'd like to get it really okay. quick. The reason this is coming back is because there's a group that uh, became aware of it that it, it did not allow for private property. So that the city was dictating these requirements on private property. That's including the sponge exchange. That's including somebody who may have a very large porch. Uh, it was limiting what people could do on their private property. And there's a constitutional issue there. But we don't want to be litigating. We want to resolve it. And the city did this for us. Now, I don't know if y'all, they, they, they drafted this amendment. The city drafted it based on the recommendations of the various parties. So that's why it's here. Uh, so that we can try to work it out and not litigate it. I think that's the best solution for the city, and it's everybody is compromising here, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, the fact that private property was affected and was not excluded or given some sort of a uh, different uh, treatment so that the people who had private property could do as they wished on their private property with regard to their displays, uh, this allows them to do that. So anyway, um, that and also the, um, the only other issue was the height, and it came because the representatives that went to the city didn't truly represent everyone. Uh, um, and I have a list of who they represent, and a lot of them are people that aren't at the sponge docks, and there are also a lot of restaurants. So it didn't really, uh, they weren't truly representing the shop owners, and they, even their own members didn't have mem uh, input into the, recommendations they were making to the city. So the city didn't really have a real picture of what the people needed for their commercial shops. So that's why we're here, to deal with the constitutionality, resolve it, and the city has drafted it and considers it accurate. In fact, the city sent this mailer out, and, I'm gonna, and it includes the, the original thing, so I'm going to give it to you to have so you can look at it. you need to concentrate on it was drafted by city with our input um, as to what is acceptable so um, if I can I'll just talk to Miss Vincent briefly ask her a couple things um, Miss Vincent when it came to the um, the height that was that was an input that was that came from another group and this group sort of made it clear, right, that they needed a little more height. And so that's why the compromise came, correct? I would say that's a fair statement, yes. Okay. And the city felt like that would accommodate most of the shop owners at 66 inches. Correct. Um, the requirement for the, the fence area, um, that the way it's worded right there, it doesn't specifically require a continuous fence, correct? In other words... I, I would say, yeah, I, I, we're looking for a substantial enclosure such that what we're trying to do is prevent racks from migrating out onto the street, rolling out of the street. So if we can accomplish that with, uh, you know, with some openings in the, in the enclosure, that would be fine. That was a concern uh, of some of the sure. people for access mm -hmm. into the shops. Um, 
Now, the, the, where the wording of frontage is under the code, does that not, isn't the definition of frontage parallel to the road? Yes. So there are a couple shops that have corner properties. Would that impact them negatively so they couldn't display on the sides? <coughs> The, the way that this is, is limited to the prim the display is limited to the primary frontage. So if you're on a corner, you're, you know, where basically where your shop entrance is would be most likely is going to be considered your frontage. So your it would not allow outdoor display along an entire side street. Uh, that would be prohibited under the, the way this is written. Now, if you have like a little chamfered corner, you know, like a corner mm -hmm, entrance, mm -hmm. that would be considered part of your primary frontage. Like, for example, Catherine's Linen Shop? Yes. They could display on yes. both sides. And, and like uh, Mama Pappas Gift Shop, the old Mama Pappas, that's kind of on the corner, too? Well, I want to make sure that we're understanding the same thing. Forgive us while I draw. You know, if you've got a situation like, you know, a chamfered corner, and mm -hmm. this is your primary frontage, right, right. I would consider all of this your primary frontage. You would not be able to display down the side street. Okay. This is it, this is limited to the primary or principal frontage. That would be considered a secondary frontage, under, by okay. by the by this code. So that does limit yes. the people. And yes. I'm, okay. And that's something that I think needs to be addressed as well. That to give those four shops equal opportunity to display, uh, because they are on corners. Um, but that's not the primary problem. The, the main one that we want addressed is the issue of private property, allowing people that have private property to do what they want on their private property with regard to display, so long as they uh, protect the public, which is to secure any uh, racks that would be near the area. And, and the compromise we've reached is some sort of a railing, not, not necessarily continuous one, but some sort of a railing 36 inches high that would prevent racks from rolling into the into the street. In private property, you can do what you want with your private property, as you should be allowed to do with your private property. So in the sponge exchange, they can display as they choose to display. Previously under the code, the way it's drafted right now, the code that's in place right now, there was no provision for that. So that's a big problem. So that's one of the main reasons this is being addressed again. Um, the, the uh, majority of shop owners have 66-inch racks. There's a few people that have uh, racks for hats, which aren't particularly heavy. Those are really the lighter ones. And they go 72. They'd love to have 72, but, you know, and it would be secured to the wall. But if you can't do the six inches, you know, 66 works for the majority of the people. Um, and the, it's just that these are very costly displays, and to have to uh, replace them all can be substantial. And the standard is is somewhere in the area of 66, but there are some that are higher. Um, some of my uh, clients could testify to the, to the expense. It runs between $500 and $3,000 for them if they have to replace their racks, and it's substantial. The other problem is, if you have, and I've got pictures, if you've got a 72 inch rack, can you display up to 66 without having to replace the rack under this code? Can you do that? See, I'll give you some well, pictures. It, it says that the maximum height of the display merchandise on racks up to 66 inches in height. I think that's going to include the rack itself. So that was my question because, like, in this picture, which I'll pass to you, Renee, and I'll get. To see how it extends up, and that's beyond the set. That's in the 70s range, but the rack itself, the display stops under 66. Okay. That's. I, I, yeah, I can't, I'm not going to answer that in the middle of a public hearing as to how that that particular thing would be enforced. Frankly, that can be corrected with a hacksaw. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm going to say that you know, you know that six, you know, 66 inches in height would be the maximum. Okay, just so we're clear. Yeah. Um, that not being the most important thing. So we do need it up from 30, 36. I mean, that is what we're asking for. That's our compromise to the city to, to solve this problem, to solve the private property issue and to solve this problem. Um, and I have people that will, that, that if you need to ask questions about it, we, we understand the this has been reviewed previously, but the people have 
really reduced what's out there. The windows are not covered. The doors aren't covered. Nothing's hanging off the roof. It's just allowing them to have some outdoor space, which has been historically the way the sponge docks have always been. And I've been here a long time. My family's been here a long time. And they, they've always had that. And it's a special area plan because it's a special area. It's not to be treated the same way that downtown Tarpon is. It's just not the same. It's, it's got a different feel. People want to be able to walk around and look at stuff. It's different. It, it's always been different, and that's why the exception is there. Um, it would substantially impact these merchants if, the, if you didn't allow them to display. And, and this is a way to solve the problems. Um, that's my opening and pro that, probably most of my That's your opening, argument. closing, evidence it's presentation, got, got questioning lot. of witnesses, and... Uh, uh, except for the witnesses, <laughs> except for some of my uh, primary witnesses, but I mean, you know, but, well, do you, if, do you we've covered to, it. Do you intend to call witnesses other than what you've just told um, us? You know, you ask some questions, and I'll see if I have people that can specifically answer well, better I, than me, but I don't really see the need to take this for forever. I mean, it's well, just not that complex. I wholeheartedly agree with you, and I don't want to be too pedantic about the, the rules of procedure. Right, However, we're, right. kind of, we're kind of in a gray area here at the moment. I understand. Um, I can feel it, some and I don't. Please correct me if I if I misspeak. You've you've made some presentation, right? Right. You've questioned city witnesses. Right. Do you have any additional questions for the city? Um, if you'll give me one second. Sure. Mr. Hulis represents himself, so I'm not here representing him. He wants to speak, so I just want to make that clear. But, um, no, I don't have anything for the city. All right. Does the city have any questions for Ms. Coburn? Um, I just want to, so if my understanding is correct on your review of this, essentially the folks that you're representing are satisfied, are satisfied with the way this is drafted right now. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you, Mary, what, what is it? Uh, can you review specifically what you would like for your group? Because you cover a lot of different topics. I'm, okay. So it'll, I think it will clarify for everybody on the board specifically we're, we're what si you're asking for. Okay. We're satisfied with what the city presented mm -hmm. as a compromise. The only issue, if you can see to do it, is to give them a little more height to 72. But that's not the big, that's not a deal breaker for us. We're satisfied with the ordinance. The only thing is, in the, in the private property section, they are showing enclosures, complete fencing. Well, these are all restaurants. And restaurants want to keep people out while people are seated and eating. A shop does not want to keep people out. It wants to bring people in. So if you fence them straight across, not only do you keep people out, you also limit uh, egress and ingress, and that can be a problem. So you want to be able to have openings in the fencing, but you still want to have it there to protect the public from the racks rolling into the street. So we agree with that at 36, the way that it's been proposed. We just don't want it to be continuous fencing. And Ms. Ms. Vincent has indicated that's okay with the city, so that, that would work for us. Can I, have, I have a question about that, too. Um, <clears throat> what's the widest frontage that you're talking about for a fence? I mean, is a fence 10 inches wide, and you have three feet of open space, and then another 10 inches of fence. Uh, I mean, really, how big of the store frontage of area are we talking about to have an area 10 feet? That's not going to be really enough. That's going to give you plenty of enough egress, I guess, you said, to walk into an opening area. Um, are you asking I'm just, me? I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is how many stores have an open patio setting straight on to the sidewalk that you are talking about it's, it's not too many but it's a, it's at least uh, one plaza um, and we've got some pictures was it 30 feet 20 feet 15 probably feet? probably the max would be a 30 feet but there's already an opening so you're not going to block the opening and you'd want to have enough fencing at least two feet of fencing behind a rack to hold the rack in place so if there's an opening it would be where there is no rack there is nothing that needs to be secured so 
if there's a rack, and I'll show you what I mean so that you so understand. So you're having a rack for the rack, basically, is that what you're talking about? I think the city's concern is primary racks because the clothes racks are, can be unwieldy and they can ro they roll, they come in and out. Um, Whatever is being secured by the fence, it's got to have something in front of it. You know, it's got to be at least that wide. So we want, we want um, basically what, what's been presented is satisfactory with that understanding. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's for you, for the city, uh, Mary, but um, I don't see anywhere in here we're talking about fencing, but I hear you t talking about the fencing using as the way to protect the rack from going into the street. Is that the idea? Well, the, the, there has to be a public interest in order to be putting the fence up in the first place. The government's got to have some kind of interest to be forcing people to put fences up. Wait a minute. I didn't hear anything. I don't see anything in here that says you've got to have a fence. Well, look on three. paragraph three. It talks about displays that are located entirely on private property and under slash within a roofed porch area. Well, that's where the fencing comes in, the porch area. With a minimum enclosure height of 36 inches may display merchandise on racks up to 66 in height with no restriction on placement as long as the displays do not impede or obstruct accessibility. Acceptable examples of porches are shown in figure one below. Well, to me, that's being very specific and very restrictive because that's showing an enclosed porch with a fence all the way around, which is what I'm asking you not to do, to allow openings. What Ms. Vincent is saying that her interpretation of what she put there, but I think it needs to be maybe a little bit clearer, is that there should be some openings allowed in the fencing so long as all racks that could be a public safety problem are fenced or, you know, they're behind a barrier. Because I'll give you some pictures of what well, that fencing... Okay. Look, can I go ahead and ask Ms. Vincent sure. to uh, address this question too? I, I appreciate your, your answer. Uh, are you asking... I'm asking about this fence issue. I didn't read in here anything about a fence. I can understand well, the city wanting to secure racks if they're allowing racks so they don't fall onto people or roll into the street and create a hazard, but I don't see anywhere that it has to be done by a fence. It says enclosure. It, it's just, it, it doesn't say a fence. Now, what, what you happen to see by the pictures, because these are the ones that I could make, take pictures of, of an, example, of an example of an acceptable type of enclosure, but this wouldn't be the only type of enclosure, so, you know, perhaps we need to wordsmith that so it's okay. a little clearer. I see what you're saying. You're talking about enclosure being the fence. Okay. See, I, I, we would prefer... It's so a big difference to me because I, I, I think the, the, the fences are the ugly. I, I yeah. Think. We would prefer cables, uh, steel cables holding these, to be honest with you. Or eye bolts ceiling. or whatever to hook on but an eye much bolt. much rather have it that way because it allows people to come in and out and it keeps, it secures the racks for sure. So, but, you know, this is what was proposed and we're okay. trying to get along. Okay. Well, I appreciate the clarification. It was to show you what that looks like, though, when you try to, you're not getting people to come in because you're oh, just getting out. Oh, I understand that. So, Thank you. And you all can look at this. Well, but, you know, that's, that's, that's the issue. We want to be able to, to right. display on private property and, and, uh, and have the height that we're asking for. So you're you're asking to basically if it if it is exclusively on private property to eliminate the need for the fences. No, what, what well yeah, I mean that'd be the ideal thing. Because be, as long I as mean, the pro all as long as everything is secured for safety reasons, which okay, we understand. Okay. So that would be uh that would be a compromise as long as you uh secured some other fashion and 
I, I just don't know of that many places that have fences. I mean, I just, right. I know about some of these shops, you can see it, but it, to me, it would be an incredible burden on on the yeah. store owners down there to, and it's on their own private property, and then you're going to make them put a fence up, especially if it's a flat area, it's not going to go anywhere. Right. I mean, I've walked inside the Sponge Exchange Mall, and it's totally flat. Those those racks are not going to go anywhere. I mean, and then to ask someone to put up a fence on their own private property is ludicrous. Well, and during the commission meeting, the chief was asked if there'd ever been a tourist ever injured by a rolling rack, and he couldn't remember a single incident. So, sure, it's possible, but I don't think it's ever happened, and I'm not sure it's a compelling public interest. So, uh, we would prefer not to have that, but, uh, you know... We're, we're trying to compromise here. We need our, we need the height. We need the opportunity to display. And excuse me, I, I have not uh, I have not heard of anybody being hit by a rolling rack and the person being run over in the street. Well, neither had the police. Chief. I mean, I don't think it's happened down there. I've Does anybody one. know about it? I've seen one, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Wait, wait hang, hang on a minute. There You're going to get your chance. There was about five or six years ago. A young girl that uh, uh, couldn't get by stepped off the street, and she did get hit by a car. People, that you know, happened. the sidewalks have been considerably widened down there. It's just a whole new world. Folks, I'm going uh, to I'm going to ask for you y'all to. I understand that you'd like to debate the, the matter, and I understand wait, that. Wait, wait, hang, hang on a minute. If we have questions, no. if we have questions for the intervener, please do. Okay, that. I'm, I want to finish what I'm saying. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let you interrupt me. Okay. The uh, the sidewalks have been considerably widened. It's a, a whole world of difference, and people. I drive through there. People are stepping off the curb all the time. They don't even look. You have to stop your car, blow your horn, and they are not even looking. And compared to the way the sidewalks were before, it, and we had nobody run over when they were narrow. I know because I lived down there. I know too. Yeah, that's right. And they were very narrow. Now it's like a highway down there on the sidewalks. So, I mean, this, is, this thing has to be fixed tonight because it's gotten out of hand. And it is going to hurt the merchants down at the docks. Okay, Mr. Attorney, go ahead. I'm, I don't know what you were talking about. What I was talking about was the obligation of the board to consider the evidence before it. I understand what you're saying. I understand there's going to be debate on the issue. However, I, the board members are not permitted to present evidence. The evidence is coming. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I want to uh, speak. I, I understand that, sir. Mm -hmm. The evidence is coming from the staff and from your intervener who's here to answer questions. And so we can move the hearing a lot. Okay, and so to, so to your, deliber your okay. deliberation of the, of, the, of the issue. Okay, I want to ask Mary. Mary, are you, have you covered your stuff? Uh, yeah, I think I've discussed everything that we need okay. to discuss. Um, if anybody else has any other questions I, for me. I have one question. Did they ever investigate any other type of uh, 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 some kind of a bracket or some kind of a strap as opposed to fencing? No. Some to... And we would, we fat, would to fix something maybe to the wall. We would prefer some sort of uh, strap or a steel cable to hold, you know, that could clip onto the racks. Uh, you could attach it to the wall or the roof, the and it would not impede. It would not be a safety issue. It wouldn't bother people as they walk by, and it just keeps it in place. And then it wouldn't be a hazard when the rack has been put away because it's above. It's not something you'd walk across when the store's closed. So. That's our preference. We understand the need for for safety for the for the public. Okay. Uh, may I have a seat? I'm gonna. I have to have the other people speak. Anybody uh, who wishes to speak against against this, the way it's written now, uh, Mr. Well, Hulis. we do have Mr. Hulis wanted to speak on his own behalf. I don't represent him. Okay. Come on up. My name is Michael Hulis, and I live at 1504 Riverside Drive. 
but my mother and I, we have a gift shop and my brother down there in Tarpon Springs on the Canise Boulevard, 801, and we rent it out. We don't run it, but we've been in business down there since 1936. It's a long time. In the meantime, I'm under oath, and I'll remind y'all, I'm under oath. This originated with a statute, an ordinance that y'all passed about two months ago, and y'all were represented, or y'all were represented to, that the Merchants Association agreed with it. None of the gift shops on the street even knew about it. And I'm up at City Hall very often. Mayor Archie's probably tired of seeing me. Of course we were not notified because the major issue is that the display can only be 36 inches off the ground. Now you can't hang a dress or a hat or anything else unless the people are midgets. And that's what created the problem. I met with your city manager, Mark LaCourse. And there were issues, by the way, I happen to be an attorney, about whether this is constitutional or not in dictating what people can and cannot do on their private property, and even on public property, if it's not a safety issue. In about two minutes, Mr. LaCourse and I, and mainly Mr. LaCourse, came up with a set of amendments to the present ordinance that y'all had slipped into that was just in your agenda with a bunch of other ordinances. He came up with that, and I agreed as well. I said, let me go talk to the people that actually have the gift shops now and the property owners. And I went down there and talked to them. I said, nothing is in stone, but come to find out, Mr. LaCourse is not against y'all. He thinks 66 is reasonable. He doesn't want anything that could cause a rack to roll out on the city property and cause liability. So either a fence or we probably can get together in some kind of a clamp or something. So when I met with them, they said, oh, well, if that's the case, we want things to be safe. And everybody agreed. They had two little issues. One was most of these racks you buy, some are 66, but some are 72. They have already had these racks. They'd have to go out and buy new racks. If it's a deal breaker, stick with the 66. Approve this thing and recommend that maybe they could let them have 72. The next issue about the fence, approve it like it is and say, but if you can make it with a clamp or something, instead of requiring the fence, that'd be a nice idea. This wasn't drawn up by me. It was drawn up by Mr. LaCourse, and I'm gonna look at her right in the face. I'm telling you that. And at the meeting, he commended me and I commended him because we got along so good. It is a compromise in that I own private property. I'm 10 feet away from this city property, and I'm willing to go along with it even as it applies to me, because I don't want an unfair advantage of the other citizens up and down the street that don't have as much frontage as I do. I'm 10 feet away, so I could put other things more than two feet away from my building. And so this wasn't done. And by the way, the whole sponge exchange couldn't do anything because the inside of the sponge exchange, the reason it gets released from all these restrictions now is because it's got that big fence in the front and there in the back. But the way the ordinance is written, all private property has to abide by it, but now they wouldn't have to abide by it. But when we went to the city hall, these people who had pushed it through, they came and complained. And we all owned the property. We thought it's constitutional now. We're agreeing to compromise, and they're still mad. I don't know, folks. I think the only, it's, a, it's really still not constitutional, but I, we're all willing to go with it, the ones that own the properties down there. I don't know, and I'm asking that y'all ask that the city commission approve the, um, the statute as amended, as redacted here. I don't know what you call it amended, a new statute or what, as redacted. And by the way, we may have the only zoning in Tarpon Springs that allows outdoor racks, but when you go to Publix, you look real good before you go in the door. There's all kinds of things for sale out there. And when you go into Walmarts, there's all kinds of things for sale there. And when you go into Ace Hardware, there's all kinds of things for sale outside. Now, I'm not bringing this up because I want you to go bother these people. 
But this is really, now, did they get out of hand on the docks? Maybe. Maybe they started having too many, but this new, this ordinance with their input is a good compromise. And the mayor talks about compromise, and I ask you to approve it as the city, as the city had recommended, as the, as they, now nah, they're, they're claiming they're not recommending anything. You just typed it. Well, okay, they typed it. As it's typed, with the opinion that maybe 72 is okay with you, and if some kind of another way of uh, securing the, uh, <laughs> outdoor racks without having to put a fence on private property. That's what we're basically ask, asking for. Is there any confusion I can add? Do you understand what we're talking about? If you have a building and you're right on the city's property, Chairman. you can only go out 30 inches. But if your building is five feet away from city property, well, then you can come all the way out to city property. But if you do, you got to put some kind of a breaker so that your stuff won't roll into the city property. That's what they were talking about on the fence. And I think we would have worked that out, and I, I'm not so, that's not a deal breaker one way or the other. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. R Renee, I have a question for you. Um, uh, I, I didn't, uh, putting up a fence, if you're going to put up a, I, I didn't read it this way that you had to have a fence because you'd be putting the fence on public property. No, no, no. That's only for private property. Okay. Yes, okay. correct. No, we so don't want those on public the property. Fence, the fence is not really an issue, is it? I mean, um, those already exist on some of these stores. I mean, on some of them they do. And that those are the, and we've, you know, felt that that was a good way to differentiate the public from the private and to keep the racks from the, the, the 36 inch really comes in relationship to the 66 inch yeah. for racks being able to tip even to tip over a, you know a barrier so well, you know it certainly if this board thinks that that's unnecessary as a group or if, you, if the recommendation is there something is either the fence or an acceptable clamping alternative or cabling yeah. then we'll take we'll carry that recommendation to the board like i said we don't really have i hate to use a term like this i don't have a dog in this fight right now you know, mm -hmm. we just we want to find an acceptable compromise and, and get this thing settled okay. really before we get back on season. So if people do need to buy racks or new racks, they can get all that done before we get back into, into tourist season and have this cleaned up. Okay, thanks. Uh, now, do you want to speak against the um, – okay, come on up, give us your name. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I have a question for you. Um, I, you have four minutes. Who, who's keeping track of the four minutes um, for our board here? Uh, we, I have, I have not been. Okay, I'm, I'm, just, I'm letting the people, I'm letting the people uh, speak. <laughs> okay, I'm just. We, we can. That's fine. You want just you, be aware. You go ahead and be the timer. Okay, I'll be the timer. Right. Right. Should be allowed his time then if everybody else has had. Well, time. we're going to cut it to four minutes. That's right. Uh, okay. Everybody uh, else, Mr. Chairman. Okay, it's going to be four minutes. If we have a timer. Okay, I'm David Galsman uh, from 7:35. He's going to he's gonna let you know. Excuse me. He's going to let you know when to stop. Okay. You have four minutes. Okay. I'm David Gouch from, from 735 Dodecanese. And I, I'm a former president of the Merchants Association for like eight, ten years, 12 years, whatever. I haven't, but I'm an active member of it. I go to all the uh, top and uh, tourist meetings on Thursday mornings. I go to all the merchants meetings. We're 42 to 45 member merchant uh, of the uh, Sponge Docks Merchants Association. There's 42, 45. They're not all restaurants. There's a few. There's a lot of gift shops and other kinds of shops involved. I was just in Key West on Tuesday and Wednesday. I was in Miami on Thursday and Friday, Naples on Friday and Saturday. I had a store in John's Pass. Nothing is allowed anywhere on the sidewalks in any of those places. Nothing. Okay? I had a store in John's Pass once. I put a T-shirt on the door. I got a $50 fine and I had to pay it, okay? I've been in business now for 20 years down on the docks. It's gotten, and the, when I first got there, we had the baskets of sponges and chamois, whatever. It's become atrocious. If you remember, it has been fixed to some extent. A woman who has a few stores there must have had 200 T-shirts hanging from her awning. I met with a few commissioners and I said, isn't that a t-shirt just like a sign where I'm restricted in my signage? Why isn't a t-shirt considered a sign? 
Okay? It's the same thing. You're advertising to get the people in your store. Okay, this whole thing about 66, I'm hurrying up here. This whole thing about 66, 72 inches. They're assuming that you're just going to allow 66 inches. That's what Ms. Mrs. Protus said. That's what makes it all ugly. Those high racks. Who needs hats outside? Who needs shoes outside? Who needs Indian dresses outside? Put the baskets 36 inches high, 30 inches wide, even though in some places down by the end by Hope Street, 30 inches width-wise is too much because you have that uh, railing there and you have to walk on the street the whole time. It's ridiculous what they're asking for. I was walking around. I wasn't with them when they were walking around when Mark was down there. But the only ones who were complaining are the biggest offenders. Okay, they're sitting right there. They're the biggest offenders of all, everything that's going on. They're the ones who are making it ugly. Clean it up a little. We're spending $1.3 million supposedly starting in May. Okay? What is it? an Indian dress or a Chinese croc shoe, uh, shoe standing outside going to make it attractive? It's ridiculous that you're even thinking about it. Really, you should have nothing. And Mark LaCorris last week at the commissioner's meeting said he'd rather have nothing. For 20 years, he said, I'd rather have nothing. So don't let them tell you that Mark wants the 66 inches. That's a bunch of bull. Thank you. Next uh, speaker who wishes to speak against the ordinance, the proposed ordinance. Is there anyone else? Come forward and give us your name, please. Okay, let me have your attention, please. Anyone who wishes to speak against the proposed ordinance? Okay, now we're going to switch over. Who wishes to speak for it as it stands right now? Is there anybody who wishes to speak for it? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have yes. a question. Go ahead. Um, maybe the city attorney might want to listen in on this. Uh, what we're doing right now is not a quasi-judicial hearing. It's a, a legislative hearing, correct? Yes. And so it, it may be hard to distinguish, you know, who's for something or against it. They may, you know, uh, so I, I think we ought to, in the public portion of it, just listen to anyone who wants to talk about it. Yeah, well, it Not, doesn't matter that they, whoever. There could be changes to it. We can, we can offer changes to this legislation. That's fine. Post legislation. Yeah, That's you fine. can, you can certainly recommend changes to it. Sure. On your that, recommendation to the council. To the okay, I can, we, that, it does not matter. They're going to speak one way. Whoever wishes to speak is still going to come up and speak. Is there anyone else who wishes to come up and speak? You have four minutes. I don't. I don't know if he's. Uh, okay, Mr. Crestick, are you being represented by uh, Mrs. Coburn? Yes. Okay. You, you. She's already spoken for you. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's, those. That's, that's all right. That's. Those are the rules. Uh, the attorney and. Uh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. My hands are tied on that. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak who is, who is not represented by the intervener? Okay. Okay. So can we close the public portion at this time? Okay. All right. Uh, the board can uh, uh, she's uh, Mr. Attorney she's allowed her a rebuttal is she not she can make a closing statement I'm Order sorry to. yes she can make a closing according to your rules okay okay the closing basically what, what I'm asking you to do today is to pass this proposed compromise ordinance that we've worked out with the city the only uh, change that I'd like to see you make, if you will, is to uh, allow us a, an alternative securing of the uh, racks and to give us leeway on, on height, if you're willing to, so long as any, any rack that's up there is secured to the wall. There's not a whole lot of safety difference between 66 and 72 because they're secured. That's the criterion that the, 
the board has to use is safety. Uh, and we're asking you to pass it like it is with those minor changes. And uh, we appreciate the fact that you're considering it. And we'd ask for your recommendation to the city commission for that. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Okay, um, start with the discussion. We'll start with Mr. Protus. Well, uh, I know some good friends here are mad at me tonight, but I really don't care because the sponge docks is getting ruined. Look at this. We didn't want Walmart and Tarpon Springs, but look at what you've got here. And as far as sidewalks go, the newer ones that were made wider is when there was some work done down at the docks and we know where those sidewalks were widened. Not all of them have been repaired. Not all of them have been given width for people to walk on. You start talking about fences, you're changing the whole face of the sponge docks. Throw the Kines. Ted, you and I grew up there. Bill Vincent remembers. Some of uh, the, you grew up coming down there. That's not what it was all about. This is a historic site. We're ruining it. We're ruining what we've been given by the forefathers that made what Tarpon is today. If it was not for Pappas Restaurant and the Sponge Dogs, Tarpon would not have had the identity that we've enjoyed all these years. And we felt the crush when Pappas Restaurant closed. Now we're gonna ruin the docks with fences, putting all this stuff out on the sidewalk, it's not dignified anymore. And being dignified does make money. It's what you sell. It's what you have in your stores. It's the merchandise you have. And there are some stores with dice merchandise, but not everybody wants a coconut head like a monkey or a wooden snake. They don't all want that. <laughs> You've got to look at what you've got and the opportunity you have there. If I were not the alternate, I'll tell you, I'd make the motion to deny all of this tonight and tell the commission, clean up the sponge docks, do it right, and enforce what you've put in there. They're not enforcing anything down at the docks right now. It's wide open. And you go down there and they worked very hard. I have to tell you, Naomi's out there from day break to nightfall working hard. Rita is. But we've got to look at what we've got there. And we've got to take the opportunity to make it work better. This is nothing. You can go to Walmart and buy this. It's your display in your, in your buildings, in your, in your shops. It's how you present things. And that's what it's all about. And yes, laugh and make remarks, I don't care. This is my town too. And this is my heritage as much as it is your heritage, all of you, for living here. And it's wrong what's going on. We should have had visuals tonight. We should have had visuals of what it looks like now and visuals to see what it would look like with what uh, is proposed, presented to us for everyone to fully understand and see. Visuals are very important. And we have to look at what we're doing to our future. The sponge docks should be marine quality products. It should be your shells and your sponges. It can be your soaps inside. It can be the things from Greece inside. And I'm telling you, we are walking on dangerous ground tonight because if this passes, we're going to be in trouble. And we need to give it back to the commission and tell them they need to clean it up, like Mark said, clean it up all the way and make it what it should be. I don't want to see a lot of fences down there because that's not what it's about. I don't want to see all those racks. You see all those racks with everything flying? Look at this, a wig, a wig standing on the corner of this fence. That's not good. That disgraces us. That disgraces us. Nina's shop has beautiful dolls in it, artifacts from Greece, things that you can have that are very nice. You don't put those out on the street. The docks was beautiful once. They start putting up those fences 
when the restaurants wanted them out there for their patrons to sit out there. When I was in office, you didn't have a fence there. It wasn't allowed. You didn't have all of this in there. It wasn't allowed. Yet we wouldn't let some people put up their tents on their parking lot to sell things, but yet we're going to allow this. We have to think about what we're doing. We have to think about what we're going to do tomorrow to what's very important to Tarpon Springs. And I urge this board to say no to this and let the commission clean it up. You're out of order, order sir. Order. And let me tell okay. you, we should have had a timer for everybody tonight, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. This was not ran right. I'm sorry. We should next time, we, uh, Mr. City Attorney, we need to have our timer here. Some people got more time than others, and that's not right. I understand when someone represents a group, but each speaker should be given the same amount of time <clears throat> to speak. Several, and several years exchange, ago. The sponge exchange has always had fences in the back and the front. They weren't just put up when the sponge exchange was remodeled and redone. And I can tell you all about that because of my husband's involvement in it. And I can tell you about the flooding and how the Pappas's went above and beyond to make sure that it stayed in contingency with what it was all about. It wasn't changed. And what we're doing tonight is ruining the historic value of this community down there. Mr. Parker. Uh, I got a, a question that I'd like to ask of the attorney if I could. Absolutely. Uh, I've heard uh, a number of people get up there and question the constitutionality of, of, of this ordinance. Uh, you being the lawyer, what, what do you have to say about that? I've not been asked by the commission to render an opinion on the legal of the constitutionality of the ordinance, but I don't believe there's a constitutional problem with either the present ordinance or the proposed ordinance. All right, that's all, all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carr. Uh, I just have a couple questions maybe for staff or whatever it may be. Um, based on how it's written, I'm not saying fences are the way to go. Um, would the would a enclosure have to apply for another permit to uh, uh, to build this structure, yes. uh, they would have to fly yes. for that. Um, part of my recommendation would be to, since they're in business already, would be some come across some compromise in the price of the permit to do that. That would be a thought of mine that I would come up with. I'm not sure it's just an extra cost that I got to incur based on a code that's put in on businesses already happening. Um, and then at that point, are they able to, to adhere 30 inches off that fence onto the public property since now there's a, a structure there? No. This okay. is specifically written that if you have um, adequate room to display, you have a private dis display on private property, you are not allowed to then display on the public sidewalk. Uh, so the city, uh, I would imagine, does have some type of uh, code for restaurants with fences and the community, I'm, I'm just, they're all restaurants just put a fence around their seating areas. Um, what we require, uh, if your seating is going to be within, I believe, three feet of the actual edge of the sidewalk or back of, of the sidewalk where the passing traffic is, we require you to put up a, um, a structure, you know, a, a fence structure such that, and then you can put your tables and chairs closer. Um, one, some of the recent ones that we have are, um, Parthenon, and uh, there's a handful of others. And that's through the sidewalk display, uh, I'm sorry, the sidewalk cafe application and license. And typically what they end up with is applying for, it's essentially a defense permit. Okay. Um, if you have a, an enclosed area or a roof that you're looking to put some type of rack out there, it can't encroach on the private property or the public property of the city sidewalks. Is that correct? Unless it's, the, the way this is written, because you have the 30 inch right. maximum. Yeah, so if, if. Look at the ones that have like six feet of open space. Right, they're not going to be allowed to encroach so on the public. So you have a rack, because I was looking at one of the no. pictures, it's like it was, you can see the two different color sidewalks. It's over the end of the it gray sidewalk. It would not sidewalk be allowed area. to encroach on okay. the public sidewalk. Um, and a, I guess this is a discussion amongst the board. My thought process is if it's on the public property, um, 66 inches seems a bit high to have that amongst a sidewalk where you're walking down the sidewalk on the public property. Private property, I believe you should have some rights, um, but I mean, we also put restrictions on signs, what you could sell, um, 
I mean, there's a, a lot of restrictions that the city puts in on codes. It doesn't really matter if you're in the sponge docks or if you're in other parts of the city. Um, there's just codes what we have to go by. So um, I understand you, there is a private property rights issue, um, but I think 66 could be the max or even too high to begin with when you have windows and other situations up front of a building you're looking at. Uh, so my thought process amongst the board is definitely in public property, 66 seems too high, 30 inches seems okay off the building. Um, I still have a concern with walking down the sidewalks. When you have multiple people, we have one person walk down the sidewalk, it's not going to be an issue. But when you have three or four people walking together and another group of three or four people coming together, you're going to have issues with the traffic patterns where people are going to step and so on. So um, there is a concern there. Uh, if going back to the enclosure thing, I think um, if anything, if you're, it'd be kind of silly to have a fence for two feet. Uh, if you're talking about enclosed areas, it should be um, continuous of some sort, at least five to six feet. Because um, then you're uh, one of the things to. Oh, I'm not going to touch that. Um, I think it's all I have right now. So, thanks. Okay, Mr. Robles. Yeah, I have a little issue with the fencing, uh, especially on, along Dodecanese Boulevard. You know, that's that's the most uh, high traffic area down at the docks, and um, creating those fencing along there is just going to ruin the whole look, completely destroy the look. It's going to create uh, a public problem with um, egress back and forth um, just as we had just mentioned you got a few people going one way a few people going the opposite way uh, what's going to happen you know it's like you're, you're creating issues there so uh, I don't personally I don't think that's a good idea I think it's ugly and I don't think it's going to serve a purpose on what it's imposed to do so thank you Renee, uh, where where does it call for fences to be put up in here? I we're mean, we're using the term fence. It, it I mean, specifically but, reads enclosure. enclosure. It, you know, you could yeah, put up a where, solid. I want three, you to read. I would like you to read to me where it says in here that a fence is required. Okay, I'm going to read. It's number three. Okay. Displays that are located entirely on private property and under or within a roofed porch area with a minimum enclosure height of 36 inches may display merchandise on racks up to 66 inches in height with no restriction on placement as long as the displays do not impede or obstruct accessibility. Acceptable examples of porches are shown in figure one below. So basically what that says, if you want the ability to have unfettered display under this roofed area, not comporting with the 30, 30 inch maximum from the facade of the building, then we're basically asking you to have the 36 inch enclosure to define that space and to keep those racks on the private property and from out encroaching into, you know, into the public property. It's not written as you have to put up a fence. It's basically saying if you don't have a roofed area and a 36 inch enclosure, you can't do this. You have to comport with number two above, which is the same as the, as the public property, which allows you to only have a 36, thir, I'm sorry, a 30 inch depth from the face of the building. That's right. all you can have. Right. So, so it, it's a. On, on public property, you can come out 30 inches. 30 inches. And you can have a display up to 66. Correct. And at that point, there is There's no, no fence. There is no, nothing mentioned where no. you have to put up a fence. No. I think there's a misunderstanding here. The, the fencing about is the fence. The issue. Fencing is purely on private property. Yeah, but <laughs> these photographs were taken of areas where they already had fences. We're, exactly, and what we were yeah. showing is that that's an acceptable type of place where you could have additional outdoor display. If it's on private property. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. But you need to clarify that section. Okay. I, I have it's no problem. It's not clear. With, it's not clear to you. Okay. Because these people are saying you got to have a fence. And that's not correct. 
this is not written clearly. We can clarify that. I mean, what what this what the intent is? It what has this, to be written. It what, has to be written in plain English. Le, okay, and let me let me make sure that you're understanding what the intent was, and then we'll talk about how it's written. Okay, well, because we have plenty uh, of attorneys well, in the well, room. Well, tell me what the intent was. The intent was that on public property, 66 inches in height, 30 inches in depth, from the face of the building. Okay, that's public property. Anything that encroaches on the public property, secured to the face of the building, correct. On private property, you have to adhere to the same standard, 66 inches in height, 30 inches in depth, if you don't have the roof and the enclosure. If you have the roof and the enclosure, you can have more than the 30 inches in depth. You can actually put your racks wherever you want on the private property. Why don't you write it that way? I can do that. Right. <laughs> I apologize <laughs> if it was I, not clear. I, I, I can work. I, I yeah. understood that. That makes okay. But that's the way you ought to write it. That's what I'm asking for. Okay. It, it Maybe says, it should come back to us, um, written the way that we can understand it. If we can't well, understand it, uh, then who can? I, you have no. to make a recommendation on this thing. No, they're talking about private property. Here. I mean, I suppose you can make a motion to no, it was behind defer it. I can tell you that the request that we had was we wanted to get this ordinance in place so that the merchants can buy whatever they need to to comply with it. So, I mean, that's... Do you want to read number three and just go through? I mean, it, I think it's... We've already been through three. We're not going to go back three again but it talks about private it's a waste property. of time she's going to rewrite it and i think this has to come back order please renee i think this has to come back to us in plain english and there's no sense to reread three again i i, I don't want people reading into it things that are not in here i know how to read and this is totally confusing you need to write it so we understand it I'm not voting on this. I mean, if people want to vote on it, they can. It is not the, clear. The board needs to take an action as a board. I understand exactly what you're saying, Mr. Chairman, and I will rewrite it. Okay. I can't promise, you know, it's a, you know I'm going to defer to this. Well, you explained it. You can listen to the tape and see how you told me, and then you write it that way. No, I, I and can. And then we'll I can understand it. I can absolutely rewrite it. Okay, fine. It. Okay, Mr. Attorney, my, my where, question where are we is, now where, so we can get this thing I, I, I haven't had a chance to comment yet, okay, Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead, comment. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I don't think that there's any constitutional issue with this, um, either the way it is existing or the amendment here. Just about everything that this board does in zoning affects private property rights. And the question is, there's a line where it becomes unreasonable then it becomes a constitutional issue. So I don't think there's any kind of a constitutional issue in, in what we're talking about tonight. Um, I do not like the idea of these tall racks out there with whatever's displayed on them. I think that detracts from the, we just, the city spent a lot of time and money developing a code-based ordinance for zoning. Is that what it's called, Ms. Vincent? Form-based. Form-based. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. You're close. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn it. It's a form-based code, and part of that is uh, to develop a character, whether it's a downtown area or the sponge docks area, that the buildings and such would, would enhance the character that we would like to either preserve or create. I think that this provision here at the amendment detracts from the form and the character that we all, well, maybe not all, but that most of us uh, associate with a good tourist-based uh, area such as the sponge docks. And so for that reason, I'm going to vote against the amendment. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> He's done. Ms. Sarah. I agree with Mr. Vincent. Um, I wasn't raised in Tarpon, but I have been coming to Tarpon for a lot of years. I just recently brought some people here to look at Tarpon, and they were coming, commenting on all the things that were on the sidewalks versus when they were in Dunedin, there were nothing on the sidewalks. Um, so I am not in favor of these high racks. Um, the 36 inches is plenty. Um, I think 
that's where I am with this too. Thank you. Um, I have to say that the racks being so tall seem to completely seem to completely de defeat the purpose of even bothering to paint the front of your storefronts from the pictures I'm seeing. And it really, there always has been a traffic sidewalk issue, even after they've widened it. I, I'm down there enough times to see people walking around in the street. It's very easy to see. And um, quite frankly, the, I mean, to me, this seems like just a broad way of trying to get around the real issue that everybody has down there. It's not a safety issue. It's the way things look. And um, really, it's easy for me not to go with this because this is too broadly worded anyways. It gives, it gives way too much leeway for, we already have a problem with um, the actual uh, enforcement down there. So this seems like it's worded in a way that they will make it hard to enforce if nobody even understands what's going on with it. So it just seems like a strangely veiled attempt at doing something else than the intent, the intent that's brought forth. But other than that, I just, it needs to be more clear, bottom line. So that's what I have to say about that. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, disapprove the proposed uh, ordinance number 2013-24. A second. A second. To, uh, who, did you have a second, Mr. Earl? Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Senior Earl had a second. Okay, discussion? Yeah, um, how come we have to disapprove it? How come we can't change the numbers back to 36 or whatever it may be? I mean, Mr. Vincent and Ms. St. Arnold mentioned that it's not, they don't agree with the 66, but are we not able to do that with this? Or how the, it, it will go back to 36. If we don't, okay, if we if we don't, don't approve do the amendment, yes. it'll, it'll just drop back to Correct. 36. It'll, okay. it'll go back to 36 inches in height, 30 inches in depth, period, whether it's on public or private property. Right. that we send this message back to the commission for them to clean up and reconstruct what needs to be done the dock. Well, okay, that's that's your I'd like that that's your that. opinion and you're free to say whatever you wish. Well, I will. Well, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Uh, yeah, I vote. would like to say um, that uh, uh, I think the outdoor displays uh, should stay They've been there for years. Uh, we had stores on North Pinellas at that time. It was called Eagle Street. That was in the late 30s. And that's where I grew up. And we had outdoor displays. And we had awnings. And uh, sponges were out there, shells. Uh, that's, a, that's a tradition. And I've got the photographs. And that was, and then we moved down to the sponge dogs. And that's been around for years and years. And when somebody tells me we didn't have displays outside, that's, uh, they, I really don't know what's going through their heads. I'm not going to speak for them, but the displays have always, that's been part of Tarpon Springs. And it really angers me when I hear somebody say that the sponge docks looks like a flea market. We stopped the flea markets from coming into the sponge docks. Sponge docks are not a flea market. Uh, this, the way it's written, I'm going to vote against it because it's not clear. And I think I've made my position clear on why this is not clear. So it's badly written, and it needs to be reworked. But you cannot ignore the people who are here tonight. These are the people that make their living down there. And if you're going to restrict them, from putting out merchandise that they sell in their stores. That's terrible. But the 36 inches, you can't put anything on 36 inches. The compromise is good. And I think we should, I think it should be re rewritten and it should come back to this board. And I don't care if we have to sit down and go through this whole thing all over again it's worth it because it's too important not to get it clarified. And I know what goes on down there. I've, I've worked in those stores, and that's where I grew up. We've always had outdoor displays, 
always. But I'd like to clarify something, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Let me, let me finish. Closed. They were shells, sponges, and marine artifacts. That's, that's what you, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. Okay. Uh, we're going to, let's, let's have a roll call. It, can we clarify what yes and no is for this so everyone knows where yeah. we're at? No is to, uh, yeah, yes, yes is, is yeah. to deny the ordinance, which would, uh, keep it in place as currently written. As yes. A yes is as, a yes is, as is. is. Uh, I would like to add an amendment that uh, the thing be sent back to the drawing board. You don't need to. I mean, the, the commission will know what if and the staff has been here to hear our comments. Oh, uh, that's fine. Trust always, me, I'm going to be there tomorrow night to explain all of this. They can so always bring back I'll, I will try. make sure that your that your <laughs> your thoughts are expressed. Well I, well, I hope so. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. All right. Okay, roll call. Mr. Parker. So the new guy gets to go first. I'm going to vote yes. Mr. Carr. Yes. Mr. Stavropoulos. Yes. Mr. Gialusis? Yes. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Vinson? Yes. And Chairman Francis? Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, we're going to staff comments. I uh, just wanted to take an opportunity for those of you who have not met Mr. Parker. He is the gentleman, the distinguished gentleman there in the glasses down next to Mrs. Protos. Uh, he's uh, our new regular member appointed by the city commission. So just want to extend him a warm welcome to the board and uh, thank him for volunteering for this uh, type of work. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. Come back. I, I have found it quite interesting. He told me he's not coming back. <laughs> uh, welcome to planning and zoning. Mm, I always thank love you. the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this was kind of mild tonight, really. It gets a lot more fun. It was, really. Rodney, That's it. anything you want to add? You're done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were in school together. We know how we <laughs> I don't know whether it would be our board, but we need to send the commission a, 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 a message that Together, we all need to take a hard look at the sponge docks and get it back to what it's supposed to be and what it stands for. And I will say, and it has gotten out of hand down there, and the police department has to go down there and start enforcing the rules that they put in place. Mm -hmm. And they need to place the area a little bit better with cars stopping, you can't get by can't get around any place. You can't walk on the sidewalk without them shoving a paper in your hand. Come to my store, come to my restaurant. That's not right. And it makes it, it does look like a flea market when they do that. And I hate that word too. But when you go down there and you see the indignities that have come into the area over what it used to be, you cry aside for what the early settlers did down there and what they tried to accomplish and what they did for Tarpon and what it made it become. And I know things change through the years. We change, everything's gonna change. 50 years from now, there may not be a sponge docks down there. You don't know what's gonna happen. But the property owners have the biggest say. The people who pay the taxes and the people who have to take care of those buildings and the properties. They're the ones that really need to say what they want down there. They're renting their buildings out for businesses, and yes, the business people need help, but we cannot ignore the property owners, and we cannot ignore the, uh, the fact that what we vote on and what we do can change the whole face of the Dothakonese and the Sponge Dock area. And 
I still love you, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with every, all that stuff you're saying. It's a lot of it's true. You know, his father wrote a, a wonderful book. Ted's father did, *Strangers of Ithaca*, and it's got beautiful pictures in it. And if you can ever get your hands on that book, you need to read it. We sell it at the Historical Society. Um, it tells about the early people that came to Tarpon and the divers and what they went through to be able to get the docks like it started and the heritage. And I think all of our families down there had a, uh, a curio store. Yeah. My grandmother, my aunt, my mother, they all had one. And then through the years as they died off and we were in college and we didn't keep it up, except for a few of us whose families have them, it's changed. But it's changed in a different way and we have to say the time now is to stop and keep it. You go to St. Augustine, you don't see this stuff. You go to Key West, you don't see it. Mm. You go up in the panhandle of the state, you don't see things on display like that. They take care of their heritage and what they've got. The, and the that's places what we where need they, to look at. The places where they don't allow it, in my traveling experience, they seem to be attracting a better element of business yes. for the type of area. Artisans, right. that kind of like mm -hmm. downtown Sarasota, those types of places on the water. Mm -hmm. You know, they have kind of a unique thing going where if it's if it's not too cluttered, you'll have other, it'll encourage other types of businesses. They, their businesses won't get choked out by what's going on on the sidewalks there too, as well. Cause you're never going to get anybody but a gift shop owner to want to be there. If it's going to get choked out by the gift shop stuff. You that go is down to the beaches. That needs to be considered a little bit. You go to the beaches from Clearwater on South oh, and like Sarasota. Nothing. The There's only ones you see on these out are the, where they have like a shopping center effect, yeah. you know, but not on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You don't see it at all. And we've got to decide what we want for our community as a planning and zoning board. And I think we've got some wonderful people on this board with good brains that can look at this everything. We've got to decide what we want in our community, build it up and not build it down. And the chairman didn't like the word free market or Walmart. And when you see all this stuff on display there, <coughs> Sunday was wild. It was wild. That's not dignified. And we have to make a decision here and be willing to stand up. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to get 10 phone calls cussing me out when I get home, but that's okay. Because <laughs> I stand up for what I believe in. And this is the way we've got to be to decide what we want to look for the best for our community. Your Uncle John would be proud of you. You're, you're popular. You're popular. Mr. Chair, I move we adjourn if there's no further comments by the board. Uh, just quickly, if uh, you don't want to take all your materials home with you, just leave them here and I'll recycle them. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Adjourn.